What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping back into Destiny 2 with some news updates and info from Bungie. And so as we approach New Year, Bungie give clarification on some changes coming in January, including for missing rewards, but also a few changes for the dawning, which will arrive after the dawning. So that's odd, but we also have an update on a future fix for the restoration bug, a mid-season update, and a couple of other things. Of course as well, we also get content this week, including an in-game spoiler, and yes, Bungie have leaked something related to the end of the season which is wild. Plus we have exotic updates for the week and a few other things to round up. But before we get into it guys, who do you think today's video is sponsored by? Is it a VPN? Or maybe some new PC hardware? Or is it instead the biggest game that you can fit into your pocket or play on PC? Or perhaps a game packed with content with loads of campaign missions, dungeons, bosses, PvP arenas, and literally hundreds of champions as well as customization options to adapt how you play? Yes, it's the mighty Raid Shadow Legends and whether you're tackling terrifying dungeons, brutal bosses, or PvP arenas, the game has more than 700 epic champions to play as, each with their own unique skills and abilities. Plus, they're all members of unique factions, with their own distinct personalities, and abilities ready to tackle any of the content in the game. On top of that though, Raid gets loads of updates, and this December, there are a bunch of festive events taking place with special promotions, minigames, and more, and players can unlock unique presents by joining the holiday event, and to do that, simply download Raid Shadow Legends using the link below, copy your player ID and game, and head to RaidXmas.com before January 10th, where you can enter your player ID and unlock access to a St. Nicholas adventure, with minigames that grant chances at awesome in-game items and even real-life goodies, from epic and legendary champions all the way to Amazon gift cards. But on top of that, existing raid players can unlock a special promo code by heading to RaidXmas.com, which grants a small in-game gift. And you can even join my clan, House of Hound, if you like, look it up in-game, and our paths may cross. So between this and the other updates that the game gets, it's a great time to start playing raid. So new players can use my link or scan the QR code on screen to get a free starter pack with two epic new heroes, including the Light Sworn. And for level 15 players, the mighty boss killer Juliana is available as well. So whether you want to tackle Raid's classic content or dive into the festivities, be sure to download the game today following the link below. And thanks a bunch to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring the video today. Now though, getting into the content for today's video, and we've got a bunch of updates from Bungie. First up, the Destiny 2 team said we've got an update on the issue affecting restoration, and they say it's a complex bug that required some core restructuring of the way restoration stores its timer data and heal strength logic, and they'd initially built the fix to ship alongside the final shape to make sure they had enough time to verify it and confirm it didn't cause any additional problems, but they say given the shift in the release date, they are working on moving the fix up to one of the mid-season updates. But they add they can't promise any specific timelines yet until they verify the fix in the new release branch, but they'll keep players posted as they get closer to it going live. And so the bug with restoration that's been affecting the timer resetting for a long while, hopefully is going to be fixed, potentially in a mid-season update later on this season, perhaps in the spring. Obviously it's been a long time coming, but hopefully we will finally get it soon. Speaking of things being broken for a long time though, Destiny Bulletin shared, Bungie say they're still working on the snowball upgrades bug for the dawn-in, and of course most of them aren't working correctly, but given that there are no updates that we know of this week, and that the dawn-in will end with reset next week, it essentially means they have been broken for the entirety of this event. So the very earliest we'll see them fixed in the game at least would be next year, assuming that the Dawning returns. So that's a funny one. But Bungie also say the issue affecting players losing Dawning materials after creating second and third characters has been resolved. And so players can now safely create new characters. And also related to the event, but someone asked on Reddit any word on the Reveler title being stuck on 15 of 16 for the Christmas event. And Bungie helped say that it will be fixed in January, so it'll be after the Dawning, but it should be retroactive. So anyone who's earned that triumph will get it in in January. On top of that, also related to Dawning, this week Bungie Help said, Earlier on Reset, an in-game message was sent to players indicating that the Dawning would conclude on January 4th. This is incorrect and the correct end time is the weekly reset on January 2nd. So more weird Dawning stuff, I'm not sure Bungie actually know when the Dawning ends apparently. But keep in mind, next Tuesday, Dawning will be gone. Up next though, last week we got a very bizarre hotfix for the game, update 7304. And for patch notes, they fixed an issue where the event card for the Dawning was showing the incorrect remaining time for the event, and the rest of the patch notes looked a little bit like this. So we had an entire hotfix just to change the end date for the Dawning in game. Obviously Bungie wanted to communicate that, but still kind of amusing that they had to push an entire update just to change a few numbers. Otherwise though, a lot of players are asking about triumphs related to Warlord's Ruin, and missing rewards associated with solo clears. 
And Bungie Help said they're planning to send out a fix for everyone affected with incorrect rewards after New Year. And unfortunately, they had to fix the triumphs first before they could begin gathering accounts that were given incorrect rewards, which has taken more time than anticipated. So there will be retroactive rewards. Of course, the triumph itself is actually fixed now. But for any players who are missing the rewards from before that fix, hopefully sometime in January it will be sorted out. Another very quick mention here though, the players have been speculating a little bit as the Bungie Foundation shared that Game to Give is fast approaching, and to celebrate the community, they plan to open the vault. And they say what's inside, you ask? And also that if the community helps them reach 7,777 likes across all of the social channels, then they will reveal the vault's contents. And as Destiny Bulletin shared here, they've now reached that amount of likes, so obviously at some point in the near future, they'll reveal whatever it is that's in the vault. There's been a lot of speculation, potentially, could this relate to updates to the game, and something exciting who knows? I mean, I guess it is possible, but I would be prepared for it to be entirely related to Bungie Foundation and elements external to the game, but I guess we will just have to wait and see. The final things to mention for this week, though, of course, we got the first exotic catalyst for the Wishkeeper, and this is the Enduring Snare refit. If you haven't seen it yet, it basically allows the snares to last for 15 seconds as opposed to just 10. But it also confirms that once again, the legendary version of the Starcrossed mission will be required in order to get the catalysts. And they'll all begin with a quest that we can pick up, and ultimately we'll have to find a bunch of secrets inside of the Starcrossed mission. This week, there's a cool kind of star puzzle that can be revealed in the opening section for the mission, and by shooting the glowing stars, it creates this cool inscription. And so it'll basically be a case of run the mission and to find the anomaly that'll change location each week to complete a small puzzle, which of course ultimately allows us to unlock the catalyst on the completion of the mission. But if you want a full guide on how to get this week's one done, I've got a video which I'll link down below. The other strange component for this week though, and inside of the weekly story, of course we have to return to an ascendant challenge. It's been a while since we've needed to do one of those, but at the end of the story, following all of the dialogue, it would appear that some of the text for Osiris's dialogue is actually incorrect and displays dialogue for the end of the season. And so spoiler alert right here for potential story coming up at the end of the season, but over the top of some different audio dialogue, we got the text that said many long weeks of constant research have paid off. And Osiris believes there is a way to follow Crow through the portal and urges us to keep going. And so that would suggest that Crow is going to be one of the first folks who actually finds their way into the Traveller and the Pale Heart. And of course, this is all slowly brewing up towards the final she. And so it should also mean some kind of meeting between Kate Six and the Crow. Of course, that is probably something that'll happen during the final shape as opposed to this season. But it gives us that info that Crow will indeed be a key character in terms of opening the portal and getting access to the Pale Heart. But it is pretty wild that Bungie managed to leak the end of the season story, or at least a component of it, via the text in the game this week. So give us your thoughts on that and the weekly story if you've run it. But otherwise, guys, for today, of course, Bungie acquired at the moment as we're in the holiday period, so we're not getting a ton of updates, but when we do get them, I will be sure to keep you posted. So definitely get subscribed to the channel and turn on notifications so that I can keep you up to date. Otherwise, though, I appreciate you tuning in as always, and if you've enjoyed the video, a rating below very much helps us out. For now, though, whatever you guys get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.